Majjhimanikaya, Sutta number 136, Maha Kamma Vibhanga Sutta, Greater Exposition on Action. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel's sanctuary. Now, on that occasion, the Venerable Samiddhi was living in a forest hut. Then the wanderer, Potaliputta, while wandering and walking for exercise, went to the Venerable Samiddhi and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down at one side and said to the Venerable Samidhi, Friend Samidhi, I heard and learned this from the recluse Gautama's own lips. Bodily action is vain, verbal action is vain, only mental action is real, and there is that attainment on entering which one does not feel anything at all. Do not say so, friend Potaliputta, do not say so. Do not misrepresent the Blessed One. It is not good to misrepresent the Blessed One. The Blessed One would not speak thus. Bodily action is vain, verbal action is vain, only mental action is real. But, friend, there is that attainment on entering which one does not feel anything at all. How long is it since you went forth, friend Samidhi? Not long, friend, three years. There now, what shall we say to the elder bhikkhus when a young bhikkhu thinks the teacher is to be defended thus? Friend Samidhi, Having done an intentional action by way of body, speech, and mind, what does one feel? Having done an intentional action by way of body, speech, or mind, one feels suffering, friend Potaliputta. Then, neither approving nor disapproving of the Venerable Samidhi's words, the wanderer Potaliputta rose from his seat and departed. Soon after the wanderer Potaliputta had left, the Venerable Samidhi went to the Venerable Ananda and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down at one side and reported to the Venerable Ananda his entire conversation with the wanderer Potaliputta. After he had spoken, the Venerable Ananda told him, Friend Samidhi, this conversation should be told to the Blessed One. Come, let us approach the Blessed One and tell him this. As the Blessed One explains to us, so we shall bear it in mind. Yes, friend, the Venerable Samidhi replied. Then the Venerable Ananda and the Venerable Samidhi went together to the Blessed One and after paying homage to him, they sat down at one side. The Venerable Ananda reported to the Blessed One the entire conversation between the Venerable Samidhi and the wanderer Potaliputta. When he had finished, the Blessed One told the Venerable Ananda, Ananda, I do not even recall ever having seen the wanderer Potaliputta. So how could there have been this conversation? Though the wanderer Potaliputta's question should have been analyzed before being answered, this misguided man answered it one-sidedly. When this was said, the Venerable Udayin said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, perhaps the Venerable Samidhi spoke thus referring to the principle, whatever is felt is suffering. Then the Blessed One addressed the Venerable Ananda. See, Ananda, how this misguided man, Udayin, interferes? I knew, Ananda, that this misguided man, Udayin, would unduly interfere right now. From the start, the wanderer, Potaliputta, had asked about the three kinds of feeling. 
This misguided man, Samidhi, would have answered the wanderer, Putaliputta, rightly, if, when asked thus, he would have explained, Friend, Putaliputta, having done an intentional action, by way of body, speech, or mind, whose result is to be felt as pleasant, one feels pleasure. Having done an intentional action by way of body, speech, or mind, whose result is to be felt as painful, one feels pain. Having done an intentional action by way of body, speech, or mind, whose result is to be felt as neither pain nor pleasure, one feels neither pain nor pleasure. But who are these foolish, thoughtless wanderers of other sects, that they could understand the Tathagata's great exposition on action. You should listen, Ananda, to the Tathagata as he expounds the great exposition on action. This is the time, Blessed One, this is the time, Sublime One, for the Blessed One to expound the great exposition on action. Having heard it from the Blessed One, the bhikkhus will remember it, then, listen, Ananda, and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the Venerable Ananda replied. The Blessed One said this. Ananda, there are four kinds of persons to be found existing in the world. What for? Here, some person kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips. He is covetous, has a mind of ill will, and holds wrong view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. But here, some person kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips. He is covetous, has a mind of ill will, and holds wrong view. On the dissolution of the body, after death, he reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Here, some person abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip. He is not covetous, his mind is without ill will, and he holds right view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination even in the heavenly world. But here some person abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip. He is not covetous, his mind is without ill will, and he holds right view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. Here, Ananda, by means of ardor, endeavor, devotion, diligence, and right attention, some recluse or Brahmin attains such collectedness of mind that, when his mind is collected, with the divine eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, he sees that person here who kills living beings, who takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, being covetous, having a mind of ill will and holding wrong view, and he sees that on the dissolution of the body after death, 
this man has reappeared in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. He says thus, Indeed, there are evil actions. There is result of misconduct. For I saw a person here who killed living beings, had taken what is not given, misconducting himself in sensual pleasures, speaking falsehood, speaking maliciously, speaking harshly, gossiping, him being covetous, having a mind of ill will, and holding wrong view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, this man has reappeared in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. He says thus, On the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who kills living beings takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, he being covetous, having a mind of ill will and holding wrong view, reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. Those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus, he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen, and discovered, insisting, only this is true, anything else is wrong. But here, Ananda, by means of ardor, endeavor, devotion, diligence, and right attention, some recluse or Brahmin attains such collectedness of mind that, when his mind is collected, with the divine eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, he sees that person, here, who kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, him being covetous, having a mind of ill will and holding wrong view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. He says thus, Indeed, there are no evil actions. There is no result of misconduct, for I saw a person here who killed living beings, who took what is not given, misconducted himself in sensual pleasures spoke falsehood, spoke maliciously, spoke harshly, gossiped. He was covetous, having a mind of ill will and holding wrong view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. He says thus, On the dissolution of the body after death, Everyone who kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, being covetous and having mind of ill will and holding wrong view, on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination even in the heavenly world. Those who know thus know rightly. Those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus, he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting, only this is true, anything else is wrong. Here, Ananda, by means of ardor, endeavor, devotion, diligence, and right attention, some recluse or Brahmin attains such collectedness of mind that, when his mind is collected, with the divine eye which is purified and surpasses the human, he sees that person here 
who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct and sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip. He is not covetous, his mind is without ill will, and he holds right view. And he sees that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. He says thus, Indeed, there are good actions, there is result of good conduct, for I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct and sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip. He, not being covetous, having a mind without ill will and holding right view, on the dissolution of the body after death, has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. He says thus, On the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from speaking falsehood, from speaking maliciously, from speaking harshly, from gossiping, while not being covetous, having a mind without ill will, and holding right view, reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Those who know thus know rightly. Those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting, only this is true, anything else is wrong. But here, Ananda, by means of ardor, endeavor, devotion, diligence and right attention, some recluse or Brahmin attains such collectedness of mind that when his mind is collected, with the divine eye which is purified and surpasses the human, he sees that person here who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, while not being covetous and having a mind without ill will and holding right view, and he sees that on the dissolution of the body, after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. He says thus, Indeed, there are no good actions. There is no result of good conduct. For I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip. He was not covetous, with a mind without ill will and holding right view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body, after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, even in hell. He says thus, On the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, while not being covetous and having a mind without ill will and holding right view, on the dissolution of the body after death reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, even in hell. Those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus, he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting, 
Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Therein, Ananda, when a recluse or Brahmin says, Indeed, there are evil actions, there is result of misconduct, I grant him this. When he says, I saw a person here who killed living beings, who took what was not given, misconducted himself in sensual pleasures, spoke falsehood, spoke maliciously, spoke harshly, gossiped. While being covetous and having a mind of ill will, he held wrong view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappeared in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. I also grant him this, but when he says on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who kills living beings takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, he being covetous, having a mind of ill will and holding wrong view, reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. I do not grant him this, and when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting, only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because, Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition on action is otherwise. Therein, Ananda, when a recluse or Brahmin says, Indeed, there are no evil actions, there is no result of misconduct, I do not grant him this. When he says, I saw a person here who killed living beings, took what was not given, misconducted himself in sensual pleasures, spoke falsehood, spoke maliciously, spoke harshly, gossiped. While being covetous and having a mind of ill will, he held wrong view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. I grant him this. But when he says, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, he being covetous and having a mind of ill will and holding wrong view, reappears in a happy destination even in the heavenly world. I do not grant him this. And when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting, only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because, Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition on action is otherwise. Herein, Ananda, when a recluse or Brahmin says, Indeed, there are good actions. There is result of good action. I grant him this. And when he says, I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, he, not being covetous, and having a mind without ill will, holding right view, on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, 
even in the heavenly world. I also grant him this. But when he says, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, while not being covetous and having a mind without ill will and holding right view, reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. I do not grant him this. And when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen, and discovered, insisting, only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because, Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition on action is otherwise. Therein, Ananda, when a recluse or Brahmin says, Indeed, there are no good actions. There is no result of good conduct. I do not grant him this. When he says, I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, while not being covetous and having a mind without ill will and holding right view, and I saw that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. I grant him this. But when he says, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, while not being covetous and having a mind without ill will and holding right view, reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. I do not grant him this. And when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen, and discovered, insisting, only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because, Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition on action is otherwise. Therein, Ananda, as to the person here who kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, he is a covetous, he has a mind of ill will and holds wrong view, on the dissolution of the body after death he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. Either earlier he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or later he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or at the time of death he acquired and undertook wrong view. Because of that, on the dissolution of the body, after death he has reappeared in a state of deprivation in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. And since he has here killed living beings, taken what is not given, misconducted himself in sensual pleasures, spoke falsehood, spoke maliciously, spoke harshly, gossiped, being covetous and having a mind of ill will and holding wrong view, 
he will experience the result of that either here and now or in his next rebirth or in some subsequent existence. Therein, Ananda, as to the person here who kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips, he is covetous, has a mind of ill will and holds wrong view, on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Either earlier he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or later he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or at the time of death he acquired and undertook right view. Because of that, on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination even in the heavenly world. But since he has here killed living beings, taken what is not given, misconducted himself in sensual pleasures, spoke falsehood, spoke maliciously, spoke harshly, gossiped, being covetous and having a mind of ill will, holding wrong view, he will experience the result of that either here and now or in his next rebirth or in some subsequent existence. Therein, Ananda, as to the person here who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, he is not covetous, his mind is without ill will, and he holds right view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Either earlier he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or later he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or at the time of death, he acquired and undertook right view. Because of that, on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. And since he has here abstained from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct and sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, being not covetous, with a mind without ill will and holding right view, he will experience the result of that either here and now or in his next rebirth or in some subsequent existence. Therein, Ananda, as to the person here who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct and sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, not being covetous and with a mind without ill will and holding right view, and on the dissolution of the body after death reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. Either earlier he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or later he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or at the time of death he acquired and undertook wrong view. Because of that, on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. But since he has here abstained from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct and sensual pleasures, from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip, not being covetous and with a mind without ill will and holding right view, he will experience the result of that either here and now or in his next rebirth or in some subsequent existence. Thus, Ananda, 
There is action that is incapable of good result and appears incapable. There is action that is incapable of good result and appears capable. There is action that is capable of good result and appears capable. And there is action that is capable of good result and appears incapable. That is what the Blessed One said. The Venerable Ananda was satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words.